So today I'm going to show you how to replace your impeller on your Yamaha 74 stroke outboard motor. The first thing you need to do is you need to tilt your motor up. I'm going to use the tilt button on the side of this engine. Tilting the motor up will allow us to easily work on this engine and uh, removing the lower unit will be a lot easier. So our next step is to remove the lower unit to access the impeller and it's going to have a fresh impeller so it has a good solid stream coming out of the engine so the engine is cool when running. Located on your midsection you have this rubber piece that you need to remove. Sometimes you can get it with your fingers. If not, use a flathead screwdriver to help you pry this out. There you go. And down here, uh, we're going to remove a bolt. Using a 12 millimeter socket, you need to remove the bolt, which holds the zinc trim. And once you remove this trim tab, there is a hidden bolt that is holding the midsection and the low unit together. Once you unscrew the bolt completely, the zinc will come right out and right here is a hidden bolt. You also need a 12 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. And here is the bolt. There you go. So the next step is getting a 14 millimeter wrench and removing all these bolts. There are one, two, two on one side and two on the other side. So four in total that you need to remove. So after removing all the bolts, you always want to leave one on there just in case, you know, we don't want the lower unit flying all the way down. Uh, you want to tap it. All right. So we're going to take the safety bolt out that I put in here. Put that to the side and you want to lower it down and do not lower it all the way down because you have your speedo tube right here that we have to disconnect. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth with my pliers to loosen up the tube and that will make it to come free just like that. Now slide the lower unit right out of the engine. So now all we do is remove the water pump housing. You need a 12 millimeter socket and wrench to remove these bolts. And once this housing comes up, you will, you will have access to your water impeller. So all the bolts are removed. I'm just going to lift up on this water pump housing. Try not to damage the gaskets. You might have to use your finger. Just like that, you are exposed to your impeller. So now all you need is a flathead and all you have to do is pry the impeller out. There we go. Uh, make sure you watch your uh, key shaft right here. It's a woodruff key. Um, you do not want to lose that because you need that for your impeller to spin. For comparisons, here's the new one versus the old one. As you can see, these fins are straight. That's how it's supposed to be. And you really don't want the fins to be bent like that because that will reduce the pumping of the water going through your engine. So to install this, you want to make sure that the notch right here, that's for your uh, woodruff key, to slide in there, that has to be going down. So I'm gonna slide this over the shaft, onto here, and you want to line up the impeller with that notch. This is very important. And there we go, she's in. It's always a good idea to put some grease in your water pump housing. Now we are going to slide this housing onto the impeller right now. 
also while putting pressure with one hand on the impeller housing, you want to rotate the drive shaft clockwise while putting pressure on the housing. There you go. Now, make sure you grease up your bolts or put anti-seize so it comes out good uh, the next time you service your engine. I'm gonna be using grease. Before reassembling this lower unit, get some grease put it at the end of the drive shaft because I've seen sometimes that the drive shaft could actually lock into your power head if you don't grease up the splines. So we are going to put the lower unit back onto the engine. Make sure you connect the tube. Don't forget that. That is to use your speedometer. If you don't hook that up, your speedometer won't work. And we're just gonna line things up. If you're lucky, it's gonna slide in like that onto your engine. Sometimes you have to rotate the drive shaft or the power head to line up the splines on the drive shaft. When assembling the lower unit, you want to make sure that you do grease up your bolts or you put some anti-seize on it. So make sure that you tighten all the bolts and don't forget the one that goes under the trim tab. So with the service, I'm gonna be installing a new zinc because the old one, it did have some corrosion on it and it's a cheap replacement and it makes your motor look a lot better than having corroded zincs on your engine. So I'm gonna install that right now. After installing the zinc, don't forget this rubber grommet piece, which goes on your midsection. Just like that. So the motor is ready to be started. Here, we're gonna fire her up. First thing we saw is the uh, impeller kick in. It's pumping great water. Really good water flow. Um, I'm gonna tilt the motor up so when I put it in gear, it doesn't hit my stand. Uh, that should be good enough. Here I'm going to put the motor into forward first. Neutral. And reverse. Alright, so... The motor working just like it's supposed to be. 